Hey, Dr. Hancock, we're super excited to have you. Uh, thanks for being part of our conversation here. We're talking about uh, the Bible and technology and how that impacts our lives. Um, there are lots of good things, obviously, that technology brings. Uh, we're able to have this discussion on opposite sides of town um, while you're, uh, you know, uh, when we play this here in chapel, you're going to be seeing patients and uh, being God's hands of healing. So that's really awesome. Um, and we're really thankful uh, to have you, uh, have you here today. So, um, you know, this conversation we're talking about, um, we just recognize that uh, technology has a lot of great benefits in our society, but we also know that it's doing something to us. And we're going to be talking about that uh, in different ways today. But we invited you to just weigh in on what impact technology and screens uh, and phones um, have on our physical health. So we talked about some of those questions and uh, we're excited to, to have you share about some of that. Well, thanks for uh, inviting and, and having me uh, discuss this for, uh, for the chapel. Um, I appreciate that. Hopefully uh, what I have to say will be helpful for everyone. Um, I think one of the, you know, specifically talking about technology and, and uh, screens and uh, social media and our phones and connectedness and, and so forth. Um, uh, to start with just talking about the, uh, uh, how, uh, how this affects our health and development and some of the concerns maybe uh, from the medical side uh, with how uh, this is affecting all of this. Um, there have been a lot of studies done that have shown a lot of associations, you know, for some concerning things occurring uh, in society with uh, screen time and media use and phones and so forth, uh, including things like uh, ADHD, uh, anxiety, depression, hmm. suicide, uh, eating disorders, um, obesity, uh, insomnia, uh, wow. other sub disorders as well. Um, and even just our over cogn overall cognitive ability. So, uh, you know, uh, when we're younger, we know the more screen time that we have, the more it can uh, bring out some ADHD type tendencies uh, in us. And wow. recently, in the past couple of years, now that's actually been shown for uh, our, our, uh, during our older years as well, in junior high and high school as well. Hmm. Uh, more screen time that, that you're involved with, the more you will ex, uh, display symptoms of, of inattention, difficulty concentrating and focusing, you know, finishing tasks, so ADHD type symptoms, oh. uh, even for that age as well. Um, and, and there was also a recent study that was just released, um, also looking at adolescence, and uh, again, the association with the more the screen time the less well that they would perform on cognitive functions and cognitive tests. Wow. So again, more concerns. Yeah. So there seems to be a direct connection then with the amount of time we're spending on our devices and our ability to function even in school. Yes, that, that's right. And, and of course, when we talk about technology, um, you know, it is a tool uh, and, you know, if it becomes a little G God in our mm. life, then mm. that's becomes a problem. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for all of these disorders and that it's associated with and so forth, when I mean, we know there's really good uses for technology and being able to yeah. communicate and, and uh, you know, to, uh, social media is not all bad, uh, but we just have to be very careful uh, mm. with, with how we interact with it and how we use it. Mm. Yeah. A couple other questions that we had talked about. Um, you know, uh, what, are, what might be some of those negative impacts on, that come from maybe using social media? Sure. So I, when I was thinking about this, I was kind of reviewing some things and I was, gosh, it's, it's just kind of like the way we become when we're on social media uh, is oftentimes the opposite of like the fruits of the spirit. Mm. So it's actually directly in some wow. cases working against us and makes us impatient or jealous or feeling entitled. Mm. Um, so kind of the opposite of what, you know, we would hope the Holy Spirit's working within each mm. of us. Um, and, you know, the other negative impact uh, 
that can happen specifically in adolescence would be the effect that it does have on our developing brains. Mm. Uh, part, part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, and uh, it is an, an, an impulse control. Mm. We're not fully developed in that area until sometime in our 20s. Wow. When we're younger in adolescence, uh, you know, much of the rest of the development is, is progressed pretty far except for that ability to control. And that's where uh, addictions can start. Hmm. And so, uh, and we know that once you have that part in that risk reward center uh, is really heightened, uh, and this the the stimuli can be different for different people, um, whether it's you know images or thoughts or drugs or substances or whatever. Well, social media and too much screen time can act just like that, and it. And it causes the same release of neurotransmitters as these other addictions can. And wow. so really can literally become addicted to our phones or to, you know, social media. That we've got to check it. I mean, we get anxious if we're not checking to see, you know, if there was a new post or, you mm. know, et cetera. Wow. So that, that's really amazing um, and kind of scary to think about that your body can act the same way that it would if it was addicted to uh, a, a drug or another substance and it's not coming from a drug it's coming from your phone so that's really yeah. kind of kind of scary to think about um, what uh, what are some of the ways that um, some good ways maybe alternatives as opposed to uh, having a whole bunch of screen time or spending uh, a whole bunch of time on social media for a, a growing teenager that maybe they're experiencing some of that and they don't like it. What are some suggestions maybe that you have for, uh, for teens who, who might want to, you know, uh, ad address some of maybe their addiction or, um, you know, their, their, uses of technology and they want to grow, they want to get better. Sure. Well, for those that really find that they have a difficult time with it, then I really would recommend some counseling for that mm. um, as we would treat that just like any other addiction. Um, but essentially you need to start to move away from that, you know, and it may involve, you know, giving away your phone or just not having access kind of to withdraw from it for a while mm. uh, to break that cycle. Um, you know, just in terms of, of healthy interactions instead of social media where, you know, people don't always act the best or say the kindest mm. that's social media, you know, it's really yeah. better for us all to make sure that we're getting outside, we're active, uh, having one-on-one -on -one or group relationships physically where we're, you know, doing things together, either having a discussion, a book, you know, uh, going out playing sports together, but just having actual inner physical interactions with other people rather than just over a device. Um, yeah. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, if it's if it's something that's really captivated someone and they're having a difficult time setting limits, hmm. uh, um, then I would you know actually recommend some counseling in that situation because essentially you're going to have to you're going to have to break that that cycle and it. You, it might sound draft. You may have to give it up completely and yeah. not have to do it, you know, for a period of time in order to break that. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Um, so, what are what would be then some of the most important uses of your time? Uh, you kind of shed a little bit of light on this, but you're during your adolescent years um, when you're feeling that temptation to, uh, you know, uh, use your phone or. Uh, you know, be live a technocentric world. Um, what what are some of those suggestions you have for, uh, you know, for a adolescent development um, in terms of maybe living a more uh, a, a, a focused life that's more on on God, obviously, and then less technology driven. Sure, sure. Well, um, you know, certainly this is a, a time in, in adolescence where, you know, we'd be hoping and praying and working that, and this isn't necessarily the medical answer, but, but they're making their faith their own, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that they're working on, uh, 
you know, developing it. I mean, they may have parents that are believers. They're, you know, going to Cornerstone where they're surrounded by, you know, believing faculty and staff and, and classmates mm -hmm. and so forth. But, you know, just trying to develop and take on that and, and make that faith their own. Mm -hmm. um, in general, you know, because it's a very critical time in their development where you have to really protect against, you know, anything that could lead you down the road of an addiction, mm. you know, just developing good, healthy habits. Mm. Uh, so, you know, e eating a, a well-balanced diet, and it's all probably cliche, but, you know, an exercise, getting regular exercise, you know, getting outside, getting some sunlight, uh, you know, staying active, having good social interactions, you know, that are not just through a device, but in person, mm. you know, with other people or in a group uh, doing different activities. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, that would be my recommendation more from the medical standpoint is, you know, uh, is kind of just the diet, making sure they, they need to schedule in plenty of sleep. It's often forgotten mm. by adolescents that, you know, sleep is a very important part of their life right now. And, mm. and they're and the way society is, or adolescents are in general, they, they tend not to want to spend time sleeping, mm. but sleep very important for uh, for their health and development as well. Yeah, so are you saying like maybe we should put our phones away before we go to bed? <laughs> That's right, absolutely. Okay. And in fact, for, for the students and then for any faculty or parents that, that might be there, I mean, you can very easily go on to the uh, healthychildren.org website. That's the American Academy of Pediatrics. And you can make a family media plan uh, and they have suggestions, you know, uh, making sure, I mean, as a general rule, uh, it's not recommended to have media devices in your bedroom. Mm. So no televisions, no phones, no laptops, et cetera, but to keep, to keep devices out of the bedroom. And then for families to decide on other places that they would be media-free zones, like at mealtimes, for example, and, mm. and so forth. But anyway, you can go on to that website and and they can make a plan or their parents can work with them and make a, making a, a family media plan. Uh, part of that is as well, you know, stopping media one to two hours uh, before bedtime hmm. to help, help initiate sleep. Uh, some people may have heard about the blue light that we tend to get from our media devices. And it, it just so happens that really blue light really especially suppresses the release of melatonin that helps us to induce or or a fall asleep. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's a th really great suggestions. And it's kind of amazing to think about um, how we have to rightly handle uh, our technology. And it's something that, you know, as Christians, we really need to be thinking about. And um, we want to, obviously, like you were saying, um, we want to put God first. And there's always that temptation, you know, to allow our devices, um, you know, to become those little G-gods. And, um, you know, we don't want that. And so we're just really thankful for our conversation today. Um, we uh, just are very thankful to have you as part of the Cornerstone community. And we love you and your family. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure probably a lot of the students watching this are your actual patients, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> So we're really thankful for you and um, just thankful you took some time here to talk to us. So, Well, thanks for having me, Austin. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, sometime we'll have to get you in again. All right. Thank All right. you. Yep. Thanks a lot.